I'm ready. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today we have stand-up comedian and published author, Liz Barlow. She also has a mixtape, The Bottom Six, and she is my beloved Sohor and <laughs> a Sigma Gamma Resorty Incorporated. Okay. All right. <laughs> You had to, eh, uh-huh. like, eh. uh-huh. <laughs> sure. um, and you can find her at Liz Barlow too. Liz, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? I am tired and wonderful, and yeah. and all of those things. <laughs> yes. Um, and along the lines of your your sleep deprivation, uh, today yeah. we're talking about the hustle behind yeah. the dream. So I feel like that's right on time. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. So let's just start by asking, like, what is the dream for you? Uh, the dream for me would to be a touring comic to have a show on, I mean, now it's kind of different. So it's not really network TV, but maybe even like a streaming service and to be a writer and be respected for my writing in writer's rooms and in, you know, published articles. So that's the dream. Okay, Netflix special. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So at what point did you realize the dream and has it changed over the years? Sure. I think when I first started comedy almost five years ago, like I'm not quite at five years. When I started comedy, it was just like, oh yeah, I'll just do comedy. It was, And I was using comedy as a placeholder mm-hmm. before I could get back into acting because acting is the thing that I love. Okay. And it just took off. And so I had to realize dreams on the way. I didn't have this as an initial dream. So I say about, it was really my second year where I was like, yo, you're not doing shows for free anymore. If you can help it. Fair enough. Like, this is a, this is your thing. We're you're, gonna yeah, you're going to own it and you're going to use it and you're going to get paid for it. Um, and so by that time, I think third year came around. No, nah, it was second year, third year where it was like, okay, well, what do I want to do? Mm. Well, I'm going to all these comedy shows. I'm either the guest spot or if I'm lucky, I get to host. I want to be at the tail end of the show. I want to, I want to end up being the guy that everybody comes to see. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like writing. I love being published. I love having these articles and debates and people tweeting me wild shit and I have to block them. Block. (laughs) Right. Okay, ma'am. Have a nice day. Okay, bye. Uh, (laughs) What do I want to shit? Like, don't get it twisted. (laughs) Did we lose you? That was me. That was me. My bad. Did did she block me? (laughs) And just like that. Come on. (laughs) Um, So I I really enjoyed like reading articles and writing and dissecting and doing all those things. So I was like, okay, well, that's clearly something I want to do. And then I think third year was like, I... I, I was watching Insecure, thinking, mm-hmm. yo, I could write this. Mm-hmm. And you know, I do a series called The Fluffy Chronicles. You and I was like, Chronicles. right. But I started doing The Fluffy Chronicles, like, while I wasn't even thinking about comedy. Mm-hmm. I you just was, talking shit. <laughs> yeah, I was just on Twitter talking shit. And people wanted to know, like, how did my dates go? And I was like, okay, well, sure, I'll tell you guys. And then I have a seat. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And then it hit me watching Insecure. I was like, yo, this is just somebody's life. Why can't I turn that into something? Well, how do I get into these rooms to write? So all of it just kind of came in the last few years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I do want to highlight something that you brought up. You were saying how around year two, you decided like, no, baby, I need a check. 
one thing that a lot of women, and I'm going to also qualify with like black women have a, a challenge with is not even just charging what we're worth, but even knowing like, what are we worth? So what steps do you take to determine what your fee is? Um, I, I've i always been an inquisitive person, so I'm not really shy about asking people, hey, how much do you get paid for this? So I started asking my comedy mentors and people around me, like, if this person is asking me for this amount of time, how much should I be charging them for this amount of time, mm-hmm. for this kind of event? Um, and then from there, you just kind of keep it rolling Ask mentors, ask people who are qualified in your field, because anybody can tell you, yeah, you should be getting that amount. And it's like, mm, no, you shouldn't take that amount. Yeah, <laughs> you're not either. You're not quite there for that amount or they're actually lowballing themselves. So don't listen to them. Um, you know, so. Ask somebody qualified. If you want to be a comic and you're working in a comedy club, obviously you're not getting going to get paid as much as the headliner. But it might be prudent to you to ask your other co-host, your feature, because your feature probably has hosted at one point, anybody like that, how much should I be getting paid for this spot? Or if it's a step show or if it's something like that. And then you just... Make a sliding scale, make adjustments. I I think for me, it was not making so many adjustments that it wasn't worth my while. Okay. So going out of town, I always have to base it. Like if I go out of town and it's not somewhere like North Carolina or New York or Baltimore, somewhere where I have somewhere to stay. Right. I have to factor that in. I have to factor in just good basic math common sense is it worth gassing up my car to go there yeah for sure for sure yeah so what is the hardest piece of the hustle for me the hardest piece of the hustle right now is literally trying one trying to balance work like mm. i still work on nine to five Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so trying to balance work and trying to balance my dream. Mm. So I get up every day knowing that at least eight hours of my time is going to be occupied with someone else's desires, wishes, things that they have for me to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Then I'm sleep six, seven hours if lucky. On a good day. (laughs) On a good day. And then somewhere in there, I not only have to practice, Mm -hmm. I also need to write. I also need to work on sketches or, you know, working on my own podcast or I need to upload this fluffy because, you know, if I don't do it, then we go. (laughs) Right. Then I go weeks without it. (laughs) So... The people need it, sis. <laughs> the, the people, the people want the fluffies, and I do my best. Okay. <laughs> um. So it's balancing that, but then it's also balancing my personal life. Like we have Friendsgiving happening next Saturday. I've been trying to do this damn centerpiece for the last four weeks. <laughs> flowers still sitting over there in the bag, you know. I know. And they take flowers, so it's fine. But like, just finding time to drop food off at my mom's house, or like, check in with people. Because right. with, with me, I can get so caught up in the grind that I don't see anything else. It's like I go to work, and then when I'm off, I, you know, I try to work out a little bit. I try to eat a little something decent, and then I need to go practice, and then I'm home, and I take a shower, and it's like, okay, but you live with somebody. Mm-hmm. And they're not just your roommate, you know, it's your partner. You obligations along with that. Yeah, you have obligations along the way. So those are two things that you, I think particularly women in comedy, have a hard time juggling. I mean, there are a lot of women in comedy that don't have children, they don't have a family, they're just kind of single and they can float, and, and God bless them. And, you know, just like any other woman, they're happy with where they are, and some aren't. But if you have obligations to people 
or you definitely have obligations to yourself, like paying your bills, mm. then, <laughs> then it becomes a struggle. It becomes a struggle and you just have to navigate it as best you can. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So being a comedian, people expect you to be like a source of humor and entertainment, probably at all times. Yeah. How are you balancing that expectation with your need for space to your need for space and time to recover? Um, so if people know, my family knows, my boyfriend knows, like comics know, I am only funny on stage. Now, sometimes I'm funny in conversation, <laughs> and, you know, and if we're friends or we're sorors or we're sisters, you know, we probably joking back and forth. Me, you, Alex, Jackie, you know, stuff like that. Fine. But if I'm at a show or I'm in the club, I literally sit in a corner. Mm. I don't sit anybody. I'm on my phone, mostly because I'm trying to remember what I'm going to say. I get on stage. <laughs> I get on stage. I do what I'm supposed to do. I leave off. And I'm most likely looking for the money if it's if it's going to be handed to me. Or I just go back and sit in the corner. I'm not a clown. Right? So if people want a clown, you hire one. And those are legitimate forms of work too. Do your thing. But you hired a, com- you hired a comic and I'm here to entertain you in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to be held to your standards that I should be funny all the time that's real that's real I'm like that with motivational speaking so yeah. I have speech for starters my biggest pet peeve you can call me unannounced that's not my problem don't call me unannounced wanting motivation <laughs> if you need encouragement if you need like at a minimum schedule a damn consultation and you can have 20 minutes you know what I mean like I yeah. um, just the other day I was on a date and we were like we met there and then we're driving to the next place separately so I was like listen sis you got 18 minutes till I get to my destination like that's all I got for you you know what I mean <laughs> but we didn't plan this time because I would have told you now ain't the best time you know like yeah but um before I have a speaking engagement like, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be around nobody. I'm listening to my music or a podcast. You know, like, I'm just really, like... Yeah. Because it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. It really... And I'm incredibly introverted. Like, I cannot yeah. be yeah. without rest. Like, I just can't. Yeah. And I think the biggest uh, misconception is that we like all people that enjoy being on a stage of sorts are extroverts. And that's not the case at all. It's just not the case. I tell people all the time, I do comedy because I didn't want to do anything with psychology and I can't sell drugs. Like I can't sell drugs. I don't do anything with psychology. I'm a decent rapper, but it's not great. Like there wasn't, there were so many options for me and God (laughs) gave me a gift. And I'm running away. Let's let's make (laughs) it honey. Um, But I'm with you. Yeah, definitely. I don't know that I could be a drug. Like, I could probably date a drug dealer. But I don't think I could be one. Because, like, I. Yeah. I'm just not good at math. I'm not good enough at math to be. I done done sold way too much baking soda. And now I don't have enough cocaine to match with the. It's just too much. It's too much stress. People are always trying to kill you and trying to threaten your mama. And it's like, I don't want to do all that. I'm oh, okay. my God. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so what would you say is your number one secret to success? My number one secret to success is literally I have, like, m- almost like mantras. Like, if somebody tells you no, go get a yes. Mm. And that hit me one time, like I was supposed to get a guest spot. It was like my first year, second year at a comedy club here. I was supposed to get the guest spot. So it was a miscommunication and one person told me no. It's like, oh no, I'm sorry. And I was like, you're not taking that no today. So I drove up there. Let me tell you what you can do with your no. (laughs) Got in the other person's face. He was like, yeah, it's fine. And from there it clicked. It was like, you're not, don't ever take the first no. 
if it's the 15th no, then I right, fair enough. Maybe it's, it's God trying to keep you from something. Maybe you should work around it. But, but God, if you 15 no, <laughs> how do you go from one to 15? <laughs> I just, there has to be a middle number somewhere. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, seven is the number of completion. Sure. Okay. <laughs> But eight is new beginning. So how am I supposed to know? The point is. <laughs> you got to think. <laughs> the, the, my point is, like, I don't always, if this is something I know, I, I, and I think in my heart, I'm supposed to have. Like, if it's an opportunity that I know could change my life and I'm not harming anybody by trying to get this opportunity, I'm not, I don't do that whole stepping on people's backs and necks and yeah. all of that to get anywhere, then you're not going to tell me no because it's for me. And clearly, I just need to be more crafty. I need to be more persistent. Uh, so that's been my number one key to success when, I, you know, I wasn't working and I was like, I'm going to try this thing full time. I got a bunch of those. I'm going to keep somebody going to tell me yes. Mm. Even if it's in the same space, even if I come back three months later, somebody going to give me a yes. So I think that's something that I personally struggle with really (laughs) it's because i'm too nonchalant of a person like i'll put myself out there i i will ask for what i want but if you say no i'm black okay (laughs) let's go buy another one (laughs) you know what i mean um like when i was actively securing speaking engagements i would reach out to a whole bunch of people and Let's say I reached out to 10 and two said yes. I would focus on those two and not give a flying fuck about the eight that didn't respond. Like, <laughs> not a fuck. Didn't respond to my email? Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, man, whatever. But I think you present a valid point as far as, like, maybe if you just ask one more time. or You know what I mean? But I, I really think it's just I'm too damn nonchalant. Like, I... If you tell me no, I'm just like, I think the the reverse of it for me is like, you may have said no, but the yes is still going to happen. Let sure. me find out where the yes is, as opposed to let me make sure you say yes. You know what I mean? So I think it's just a different, um, like, I don't necessarily stop looking for a yes. I just, I'm like, no, cool. Have a great day. Like, yeah. okay, bye. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Going to bash your day, thank But I, I, I definitely felt convicted when you said that. I was like, yeah. I need yeah. to do a little bit. Not 15. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe that's just me. Okay. I can't get you back three. Maybe. Maybe. I think for uh, the nature of the business that I'm in is that a lot of people are just going to tell me no. So they're, they're the club in Charlotte. Like, continuously you have to email clubs over and over and over again with different takes of the same jokes over and over again for them to tell you no but it's like but you're not going to tell me no I'm just not going to take it so if I have to sit at my desk and sneak and email you from my phone or from my work computer to say like you're going to give me a yes you gonna give me a yes but that what I can say is like that it don't drive you crazy, but it does amp your anxiety a little bit. So like instead of focusing on the yeses, you say thank you to the yeses. You put them on your calendar and then you focus on the whole onslaught of no's and you have to spend your time trying to convince people that mm-hmm. you are a yes. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's real. Yeah. And one thing you said earlier that I was wanting to kind of circle back to, I know you said that you were doing full-time at one point and then started working. Is that on the radar? What did you learn in that process? Is that something you want to try to revamp and do again? Or Sure. I think um, I, so I went full-time from like January of 2017 Mm. So what I did, so I worked at QVC 
and here in in Virginia. And QVC is an awful place to work. I'm just letting you know. It doesn't people like the the TV shopping. Yes, but I worked in the call center. And you, when I tell you, you listen to the worst of humanity on that phone, like, <laughs> you... Ooh, grandma is acting a fool. Oh, my gosh. You talking about being called the N-word, C-word, being people getting upset with you. You ruined my Christmas. No, ma'am. You you haven't paid your bill. You ruined your Christmas. I'm just telling you what the bill is. I didn't do any of that. Um <laughs> talking to you <laughs> first, yeah. first of all yeah, yeah. let me explain a few things to you you got me <laughs> uh it's just it, it overall like it's just it's like any other retail company you're just like uh, well no because i've worked retail before and like the level of dishonesty uh, just kind of ate away at me a little bit just to be like, yo, you're not telling these people everything that you're, they're getting into, whatever. So I hated my job and I did my best to get fired so that I would, <laughs> would be able to collect like what I needed to collect. And I did that from January to like May, April. Yeah. And I was blessed enough. Asora was able to get me a gig in Missouri at her school mm-hmm. and hosted their show and, and made a, a substantial amount of money to keep myself afloat. I had unemployment. Um, but I was like, I'm good. Like, I didn't take off this time for nothing. So during that time, I'm on the road. And it was the most hustle I had ever had in my life. And I always, and when I look back on it, I've always been a hustler, but that was the most hustle I had ever had in my life. You talking about driving, do, babysitting during the day. So babysitting my line sister's son during the day. Then she come pick him up. Then I drive to Charlotte to make $100 so I could pay my car payment and then sleep in my cousin's house and then drive right back. Like insanity, mm-hmm. and I loved it. I didn't love the poor. <laughs> you love the hustle. I love the hustle because that was the epitome of I'm I'm gonna get it out the mud. So I do whatever I have to do if I have to fly. I remember flying out to Missouri, getting the the gig in Missouri the day before in Raleigh. I did a show. Then me and my cousin slept that night at my uncle's house. She drove me to the airport. I flew. I stayed there for two days, came back, drove, and then had a show that night. Like, that kind of stuff really was like, oh, this is the thing. This is it. And it's like, yeah, it's the adrenaline. It's like, it's, it's like the joy of finding your purpose. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I was like, oh, this is the thing I'm supposed to do. But life happens. And so I went back to work. And then I moved to Baltimore. And then I was like, oh, I don't like this place. And then I moved back to Virginia. And so now. In Baltimore, you was like, gotta go. I don't like it. I was there for a year and a half. And I was like, it is cold. The really the deciding factor, because one thing I can say, like, I always talk about not liking to live in Baltimore and I, I didn't like living there, but it got me closer to that, that hustle again, you talking about 17 shows in a month, uh, what April, May and June. It's just not possible for me to do that now working the same nine to five and instead of being like, okay, I get off work, I can go change my clothes and then get to DC in 45 minutes or an hour, it's three hours, which, you know, I was making possible before, but it's just my, my approach is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I am not 26 anymore. I'm almost 30. I am tired. I'm tired from today. Just working. Just sitting at my desk doing absolutely nothing. But <laughs> but from that, like, it now has to be more strategic. So, yes, eventually I'd like to go back to that. I would like, but I would like it to be 
hey, somebody has a plane ticket for me. Somebody has a train ticket for me. I, I don't always have to drive, which I don't mind. But now it, it's about a, a leveling up process. So that's where I am. Like still working, still doing shows, still doing everything I can to get my name out there. And I have projects coming up that that's important for. But now it's about how can I get back to that hustle without breaking my body down and also breaking my mind down. Like, yeah, that hustle was great, but like that whole time I found my purpose purpose, and lost myself in it too. That's real. So, yeah. So I looked up and like people were having babies and had boyfriends and had all this stuff. And I was like, is the only thing I'm good for is to be funny? Right. So That's so that's my current struggle and feeling like I'm good at what I do. Yeah. My purpose. I'm making actionable steps in the direction of my purpose. But damn it, I want a family. Yeah. (laughs) I said, I want to come home to somebody I actually like. Yeah. (laughs) And then you be like, bitch, I'm cute. Yeah. On my shoulders. Like, what <laughs> the hell is wrong with me? Um, I'm claiming that for 2020. I'm I'm claiming it for 2020. But it also, yeah. like, in the meantime, in my professional life, if I do this, this will happen. Yeah. Formula don't imply in love. Nope. There is no formula. Nope. They're just... You just either get it or you don't. And so we'll see. But any final thoughts for our audience? Um, don't sell dope because that's a bad idea, especially if you're bad at math. It's just not gonna work out for you in the end. Um <laughs> my final thoughts are look, it's a beauty to find your purpose, but it's also a privilege. So honor it. It's a lot of people that leave this earth and don't know what they were supposed to do while they were here. Um, so honor your privilege, but also honor yourself in that process. You are more than just a thing that you were sent here to do. You're a full person. You have a total, you're a total being. So take time to take care of that and it will feed your purpose on the back end. Yeah. <laughs> All of that, okay? Where can people find you, love? Um, I'm on Twitter at Liz Barlow 22 and Fluffy Fridays happen almost every Friday, if I remember. Uh, Instagram, Liz Barlow 2. Facebook, Liz Barlow Comedy and Chronicles. Um, PayPal, Liz... <laughs> Cash app, Liz Barlow 22 if you want to help a struggling artist, okay? I appreciate it. That part. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for being a oh, part of the podcast. All right, guys, we'll see you next week.